So many Australian property markets are right now booming. In 2024, that boom will continue. In this episode, I'll teach you where to buy in 2023, leading up to that 2024 boom, and why. We'll go through not just at city level, but down to the local government area, taking you through a mathematical balance equation between demand, how much population is growing in these different areas, and supply, how many houses are being built and expected to build. And through the imbalance of demand and supply, we can make money. If you're interested, carry on watching. My name's PK, and I help people build passive income through the Property Investment Accelerator using data without needing a $15,000 buyer's agent every single time in this channel. We talk about property, the economy, and financial happiness. Hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, give it a like, let's go. So this report was just released by PEXA. PEXA is the online registry through which all property and land is settled, exchanged from buyer to seller in Australia. So they have a good handle of what's going on. For those of you who live in New South Wales and Victoria specifically, you want to make sure you watch right till the end because you may not want to invest in your backyard. Vacant land settlements in key Victoria Greenfield LGAs were keeping pace with growth forecast, dwelling growth forecast. So Greenfield just means on the outskirts of a city where there's lots of land, okay, not infill areas where there's already lots of houses, on the fringe parts of the city where there's paddocks, etc. LGA stands for local government areas. So what this is saying is key greenfield LGAs in New South Wales and Queensland require additional unit construction to fill the gap. When they say unit in this context, they just mean houses, not like apartments. The top three greenfield LGAs in Victoria were releasing sufficient land in FY 2023 to meet the demands of population growth, particularly Melton and Wyndham in Melbourne's west. However, many of the Greenfield LGAs in New South Wales and Queensland recorded fewer vacant land settlements compared to their forecast demand or need or dwelling growth. This will require additional medium or high density dwellings in those areas to address the shortfall. So already, well, let's go through the data, but already we know Victoria has enough Greenfield land and house developments to fulfill their population growth. It's saying New South Wales and Queensland, that's where the shortage is, but it's also saying that this is where medium or high density dwellings in will be needed to make up the gap. Now, our exam is to see which areas have the ability to facilitate medium to high density versus not. And where there's not an ability to facilitate that, that's where property prices will grow the most. But you can see here, Victoria, everyone always talks about Melton as being really affordable infrastructure growth, which is not really happening anymore, given the Victoria state is in a deficit, is basically almost bankrupt, right? But you can see here, regardless of whether those infrastructure pieces were going ahead or not, vacant land settlements in FY23, 4,358, and the forecast dwelling growth, or how much is needed, is 4,018. So demand is meeting supply, supply is meeting demand. Let's look at Wyndham. Vacant land settlements or how much supply is 5,000 and the dwelling growth or how much is needed is 4,245. So there's more supply than is in demand. There's fine. There's no price growth. There's no pressure there. But let's look at Queensland. Okay, vacant land settlements. 2,267, whereas the forecast dwelling need or growth based on population growth is 4,651. So there's a big imbalance there. This is the one I want to really highlight because I'm the most bullish on Moreton Bay. This is north of the Brisbane City Council. Vacant land settlements, 1,784. The forecast need okay, is 3,737, a huge imbalance of almost 2,000. And I'm going to take you through the next five years towards the end of this video, so stick around. But Logan, okay, vacant land settlements, 3,142, forecast dwelling growth, 3,485. So it's more balanced, okay, it's not as bad. The Hills District in New South Wales, pretty balanced. Blacktown, 
imbalanced, okay, 1,231 versus 2,758, there is more demand than there is supply, as there is in Liverpool in Sydney, 917 supply versus 2,052 demand. And just to round it off, Casey and Victoria is pretty balanced. So remember how I said we need to figure out where there's so much more demand or population growth need for houses than there is supply? That is being most pronounced in Ipswich, in Moreton Bay, not so much Logan, to some extent in the hills and Blacktown and Liverpool. But I also said, as does this report, that we need to be careful. Some of these areas, even though there's not more land being released and therefore settled, greenfield, fringe areas, paddocks, strawberry farms, all of these converted into housing development estates, we need to see where you can build up, okay? Because if you can build up, you don't need to build out. And that is the case in Liverpool in terms of their zoning, especially Blacktown and the Hills. So my money suggests that even though there's an imbalance in these Sydney areas, that imbalance can be quickly patched up with the council pushing through townhouses, apartment blocks, unit towers, and therefore prices aren't likely to grow as much as in Ipswich or Moreton Bay, where people don't want to live in townhouses. People don't really want to live at all in units. This is the area where they want to have a quarter acre block, so to speak. They want that 500 to 700 square meter block they want that old school Australian dream. And that is where that Australian dream is not being satisfied because there's not enough developments. There's not enough land being settled for future housing builds. So my money is on Moreton Bay and to some extent Ipswich, but you have to be very careful with Ipswich. And this is the problem right here. Vacant land settlements have noticeably declined across the eastern states in the last few years. Okay, so with the extensions and the bankruptcies from builders, housing costs, construction costs increasing, so much red tape with basically every single council across Australia, you're seeing that vacant land, land settlements, the total volume in New South Wales has gone down, in Queensland has gone down, and in Victoria it's gone down. And that means that it's contributing to the housing shortage because future houses are going to be in short supply because land now hasn't been settled as much as it is, is in the past. Vacant land settlements average days from sale to settlement. Even if you do purchase, you know, back in 21, you know, within... 200 days in Victoria or 99 days in New South Wales, you could, in three months, you could get your land settled. Now it's taking more than a year in Victoria. Now it's taking almost a year in New South Wales. The amount of land coming onto the market is going to be delayed and delayed and delayed. And then by the time you actually build on it, you know, good luck with that. Let's look at the next five years forecast, okay? Not just a 2024 boom, but the next five years. In Blacktown, Liverpool, Camden, and the Hills, there is likely to be a shortage of houses. The forecast population growth is almost 7,000 in Blacktown. The forecast dwelling growth is just under 3,000. And there's an imbalance or 1,500 not enough houses being built. But you can see that in Blackdown, Liverpool, Camden, the Hills, like I said before, you can build so many townhouses, you can build up, okay, higher density, therefore the shortage can be mitigated. In Casey, Wyndham, Melton, Hume, Whittlesea, etc. in Victoria, there is no shortage, okay? Their amount of people per house is different per the local demographic, but you can see according to PEXA, there is no point in investing in Western Melbourne where the housing shortage that we see in other parts of Australia isn't really that acute. Where it is acute is in Queensland, Brisbane, the housing shortage, 5,000. Now, of course, Brisbane City Council, you can build up and they are, they're building so many towers. So because this relates to land settlements, we have to take it with a grain of salt. It can be mitigated with higher density zoning. Where it can't be mitigated with higher density zoning, because that zoning doesn't exist, and the local population demographic homeowners don't want to live in apartments, is places like Ipswich, to some extent, Gold Coast, but definitely, like I said before, in Moreton Bay. So once again, you're looking at 
the 2024 view, as I shared before, the five-year projected view, both data points are leading us really, if you want to be really clinical, towards modern Bay. Now, some people might say this is a bit wishful thinking in terms of how much prices are growing to grow. Some people think that prices are still falling, but as you can see here from Macro Business, since the bottom of the market nationally in January 29, we have seen Sydney go up by almost 11%, Melbourne 4%, Brisbane 9.1%, Adelaide 6%, and Perth 8%, and the five capital city average 8.4%. Now, of course, Sydney is coming off a quite a poor period in 2022. Melbourne isn't though, and it's still performing quite weakly. Of course, it's almost at long-term averages, but relatively speaking, I don't see this improving too much in 2024 because of the fact that there's a new government, the state is weak, and they're really penalizing homeowners a lot. Brisbane is likely to ramp up even over this 9.1%, which by the way, isn't annualized. This is just since 29th of January. Adelaide is coming towards the end of its market. It's been the most resilient market during interest rate rises. So I don't expect this to boom in the next year. But Perth is just starting to further improve its momentum. Keep note, some of the more expensive parts of Perth closer to the city have actually been flatlining. So it's not having this tailwind like Sydney is of the expensive areas with its weighted average pulling up prices. Perth is actually dominated in price growth by those areas under 700k and that will continue. Why will it continue? Because the Australian capital city dwelling approvals is so low, whether it's the red in terms of houses, whether it's the apartment in the blue, dwelling approvals are 23% below the decade average. That's a real problem. Why? because population growth is higher than it's ever been and is likely to be high for the foreseeable future. For the next five years, we're likely to get around 400,000 immigrants, okay? 400,000 times five years is two million additional people in Australia. When you're not building almost any houses, all your builders are going bankrupt, housing prices are going up because of construction prices. Structurally, where do you fit these people you have a chronic housing shortage, and that means that house prices go up and will likely go up in the areas that mathematically I've I've shared with you have the biggest imbalance between demand and supply. Don't think rents will not go up either. As you can see here, Domain released a report that said that Australia needs an additional 70,000 rentals to balance the market. Now, if another 2 million people come in in the next five years, okay, sure, they don't need a house each, but let's say you need a million houses or 500,000 houses. Where are they going to come from, despite the government wanting to build 1.2 million? Where are the builders? Where are the raw supplies? Where is the clearance of red tape and local council bureaucracy? I don't see it happening. I see that these issues continuing. Socially, it's terrible, but if you're a property investor, you can contribute to the solution by adding more supply, and you can do that and make money on the way by buying in some of these areas that I've mentioned. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you want to level up, I'll leave links below to my podcast on Spotify, Google and iTunes, Australian Property Mastery with PK, and also my Facebook group with 40,000 amazing people, Australian Property Mastery with PK. Knowledge is fantastic, but you have to take it, you have to swallow it, you have to just let it nourish your entire body. If you just watch knowledge, consume knowledge, but don't actually chew it, don't actually mull over it, don't actually swallow it, then your body or your finances will never be nourished. Take action, guys. Subscribe. See you later.